The next section on the PAT is angle ranking. Remember, these questions tend to be a lot faster than the other questions, so you should be spending around only 20 seconds each. Now, just because they're faster though, doesn't necessarily mean they're easier, because these do require the ability to distinguish very fine differences among different angles. So this will require practice. However, since it is faster, it is important to do these questions and the hole punching questions first, which will allow you to get the greatest number of points per time on the section right away. Either way, let's go ahead and discuss the rules and strategies you'll use for tackling these kinds of questions. Just like for the rest of the section, you'll want to breeze right past the rule page because looking at it will eat into some of your time and you will already know all the rules before attempting any of these questions on your official test. To give you an overview of what those are though, you'll always be given four different interior angles and be asked to rank them from smallest to largest. Be careful because oftentimes incorrect choices will include the opposite order of largest to smallest. I mentioned interior angles because for any given angle you could actually look at it in two different ways. Let's say you have a 90 degree angle. Since that's part of a circle, you could also actually look at the outside of it, which would be a 270 degree angle, but that's never what you'll be looking at on test day. You'll only be looking at the interior, smaller angle formed and never going at it from the opposite direction. And that's it. That's the entirety of the rules for these questions. You're simply ranking them in order from small to large. We do have several strategies to help you in tackling these though, because again of that fine difference and how difficult these can be. The first rule is always to look for the extreme angles, so the smallest and the largest. By figuring out which ones are extreme, you may be able to eliminate enough so that you never actually have to look at the middle angles, which tend to be a little more difficult to distinguish. Really, if any angle jumps out at you as being clearly the biggest or the smallest, you should start there. Once you've done some elimination with largest and smallest, the next step is to use blocking. Now this strategy doesn't work for every single question, but when the angles are relatively lined up, you can visualize what they would look like if you were to cover the extra lengths of the arms of these angles. The reason why this strategy is beneficial is because it can actually be very distracting to have arms that are different lengths. For example, if you have one arm of your angle that's very short and one that's very long for one of the choices, but then for the second angle you have two very long, those actually can start looking different, but that's more of an optical illusion. And so by covering up that excess, you're putting all the angles in the same playing field and you'll be able to more easily compare them. When blocking isn't helpful, another strategy is to use stacking. And this is imagining one angle stacking inside another, so that you have all four angles eventually into a nested system. This actually is helpful because it allows you to visualize how they relate to one another, but you can modify this in whatever way works the best for you. So for example, you can imagine the angles eating one another. So whatever angle is bigger gets to eat the smaller one, kind of like big fish eating small fish. So if you're thinking about which one could eat the other, that may be helpful. Another way of visualizing it is as laptops and which laptops are open and which ones are closed and where they are in the middle. A final way that's similar to all of these is to imagine these as hands on a clock. So you can see the biggest difference among the hands. You get the idea here though, which is that you're visualizing these abstract angles as something more concrete and more realistic. By using this, you'll actually find that it's easier to compare because you're looking at something that you look at every day versus something that's unique to the test and more difficult to visualize. Either way, you'll be able to customize all three of these strategies to be the most efficient for you so that you can quickly pick out the obvious pieces and use some visualization, whether blocking or stacking, to determine where the others lie only if necessary.